Good morning. Well, I've only got 20 minutes, uh, and I'm going to be attempting three different demos, uh, which is even going to be tempting the demo gods more than Keith and Liza, so uh, I'm going to get straight to it. Um, my talk is about Redium, an open source browser-based implementation of EPUB 3, started by IDPF and supporters earlier this year. Uh, probably many of you know what EPUB is, but just in case, it's an open standard format for ebooks and other digital publications, developed by the organization I work for, the International Digital Publishing Forum, aka IDPF. You could say EPUB is kind of like a website in a zip file with some extra structure and metadata. And you could say, so what? Well, EPUB has been very successful for trade ebooks. Thanks to demand for content that can reflow to different size screens, EPUB has quickly displaced formats like PDF, the page under glass model just isn't a great fit for immersive reading on different size screens. And for several years, all of the big six trade publishers in the United States have been submitting one single EPUB file to all of their distribution channels. And that includes Amazon. Kindle uses a proprietary format. But these days, most eBooks start out as EPUB and get converted along the way. Everyone else in the ecosystem, Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Google, many others, they deliver EPUB right out to their customers. Ebooks is now over 20% of sales for major publishers in the US. And some bestsellers are now doing 50% of their sales in ebooks. I mean, for those of we, us who were here at the first books in browsers uh, three years ago, the idea that now bestsellers, we're not talking long tail, but bestsellers can be doing 50% of their sales in ebooks is an amazing transformation in the market. But on the other hand, let's face it, browser based reading represents a rounding error on consumer adoption of ebooks to date. But the good news is, thanks to EPUB, HTML-based content represents nearly all of that consumer adoption. EPUB 3 is the latest version of EPUB. It's based on the latest web standards, including HTML5, adding rich media and interactivity, global language support, and extensive features for accessibility. It's a huge upgrade from EPUB 2, which I'll get back to in a little bit, which had much more limited capabilities and was based on 12-year-old web standards. But I'm delighted that as of today, EPUB 3 is already supported by Apple iBooks, by Kobo, by InDesign Creative Suite 6, by Google, by the Oxygen XML Editor, Airbook, Blue Griffin, Voyager Japan, and many others, including a company called VitalSource from Ingram. In fact, this slide isn't mine, it's VitalSource's. And before I get into Redium, I want to show you just a little bit about what they're doing with EPUB 3. VitalSource is an e-textbook provider owned by Ingram, they delivered 5 million e-textbooks in 2011. They've got content from more than 270 publishers. And they're, they've got over 2.5 million users, and they're adding over 10,000 users a week. That adoption is pretty significant. There are folks that are arguing that e-books will remain just digitized print or text-only things like novels. I think that's being constrained by the blinders of print and by the blinders of e-ink, which are limiting our thinking in terms of the possibilities of the digital book. For Vital Source, the digital book has never been just about digitized print. And this adoption shows that it really does have legs. The Vital Source bookshelf has support for more than a dozen different platforms, mobile devices, tablets, PCs. And of course, they have a cloud reader. And their product has evolved over the years from first PDF-based textbooks to their own proprietary format, and now they're, they're all in for EPUB 3. One of the main drivers for them to go into EPUB 3 is the tablet and the rise of devices that are more suitable for rich interactive content. In fact, where the users demand interactive content. Another driver is accessibility. Being able to make content available to all people, regardless of whether they have blindness, dyslexia, dyslexia, or other reading disabilities. Or like me, just got off a plane from Seoul and are a little bit jet lagged. Let me give you a brief demo of Vitalsource Bookshelf before I get on to reading. Here's a relatively simple book, this, these are, this is a real textbook on circulation in the cardiovascular system. Uh, because of EPUB 3, 
It's got uh, the ability to have uh, quizzes and things in here. Uh, but let me show you something that's a little bit more engaging than this standard uh, sort of HTML form. Here's some drag and drop information about uh, the lens. I'm just going to drag these over here. I'm down at low resolution on this screen here, so we've got a little scrolling to do. Let's check my answers. Well, I don't think you want me to do uh, eye surgery for you. Let me uh, show you a, 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 a demo not suited for uh, higher education. Uh, this is showing one of the features that enables accessibility in EPUB 3 called Media Overlays that synchronizes pre-recorded audio with text. Now that can be done to read, to read an entire book with pre-recorded audio or you can have uh, things that uh, are a little funner than that. Ten fingers on my hands. Okay, I think you get the idea. But the, now, the key thing about that, though, is not that it's cute, and that's arguable. The key thing about it is that it's done 100% in declarative standard markup that is interoperable across multiple tools and reading systems. I'm going to show one more demo, and then we'll get back to our, our main event here. Now, we're going to hear this afternoon from some folks uh, who have different ways to create compelling, engaging experiences. Uh, this is one that's based on standard EPUB 3, not a proprietary format, not locking you into a single workflow or a single delivery platform, but something that can be authored with standard tools and delivered to any EPUB 3 reading system. It shows that you don't have to have a book as a sequence of pages. You can think of it as a more interactive and fluid environment. Here's one that has a, a, you know, a sort of a, a pop-up navigation. It's got uh, videos embedded. For centuries, scientists tried to explain why there are volcanoes in some places, etc. So you can see that you have, uh, you have uh, quizzes here, too. Um, you've got the ability to have here something that is more like an application experience, more polished in terms of its navigation and customized than just a table of contents. All, again, all done in, in standard, uh, standard EPUB markup and all interoperable. So, that's just a small taste of vital source, and I'll, I'll, you'll see in a minute why that's relevant to what we're doing with this Redium project. But let's get back to Redium. IDPF decided to develop a reference system implementation of EPUB 3, to, primarily to give producers a way to test content and provide a test bed for demonstrating EPUB 3 functionality before many of these vendors had upgraded their systems or rolled out EPUB 3 solutions. E Reading was kicked off at Tools of Change in February. It uses JavaScript to add EPUB 3 support to what's already in browsers. You might say a little bit like what jQuery does in adding a library of common functionality to browsers. The initial packaging of Reading is a Google Chrome browser extension. It manages a library of content that can be read offline, kind of like a full reading app, although it really wasn't ever intended to be a consumer product. Let me do a brief demo of Redium. Well, let's start with our little friend here. Ten fingers on my hands. Now, this is exactly the same file. In fact, I dropped it in yesterday. I got it on the plane back from Korea. Fingers on my hands, on my hands. Ten. Okay, enough of that. Let's show something a little more interesting. Uh, this is manga content. Not in English, obviously. This is reflow content. Of course, part of the vision of EPUB, EPUB is to allow content to reflow to different size screens or for a convenient, uh, uh, convenient reading experience. We can make the font smaller or bigger here. You can see that it reflows accordingly. Of course, this is right to left uh, topography with a right-to-left page progression direction, um, something the browser hasn't actually been very good at doing. In fact, as part of the reading project, we've made changes to WebKit to improve its support for, for East Asian topography, and those changes are going back into the WebKit mainline, we hope, pretty soon. So it's an example of where we're not only just adding on to the browser, but trying to improve the web standards and the browser implementation. 
Of course, you can read regular stuff. This is a, an O'Reilly book, just a hat tip to our, our, our uh, co-sponsors here. You've got um, rich fixed layout publication support as well as a reflow support. And you've got the, something called MathML support to allow you to have equations that are typeset. This is a, a real book, and you can see a, a fairly s significant amount of math in here. The key thing about this math is that it's not bitmap images or SVG, but live equations represented in a format called MathML that, that is not only able to be reformatted appropriately as the, uh, on smaller or larger size screens, but is fully accessible to people with print disabilities and is sort of intelligible to machines who want to process the information. So MathML is sort of a semantically rich format for mathematics. So that's just a very, very quick tour of Redium. You can try it out for yourself. Uh, you can uh, go to redium.org and install it from the Chrome uh, Web App Store. You can see we have over 13,000 users and four-star rating, even though it was never our intention to really be a user app, and it's still very much an experimental system. Uh, but it is something you can, you can add. Or if you have Chrome, you can go to the Chrome Web Store. Just search on Redium. And you can see the little, uh, our little blurbs and stuff for it there. So help yourself uh, to that. If you actually don't want to bother installing it, there is a cloud-based configuration of Redium, kind of experimental github.redium.org, uh, and, and it, it will uh, let you experience Redium right in the browser without any install at all. And um, if you really want to help with Redium, which would be fantastic, go to the GitHub site. You can see that we've had uh, uh, almost 800 commits since, uh, since we started the project. And it's actually available now, I think, in six different languages, including Indonesian, Korean, Chinese, uh, uh, as well as French and German and English. So we really are grow getting a large community of, of dozens of contributors helping make Redium better, uh, but we've got a long way to go. So what have we learned from Redium so far? Well, the first thing is, a reference system is just the beginning. The ecosystem around Redium is demanding support for an SDK. They want an engine to be able to make EPUB3 applications easier. Uh, you saw that Vitalsource already has EPUB3, as well as a number of others like Kobo and Barnes and & Noble. But not everyone has the resources of an Apple or a, or a Kobo or a Vitalsource, Ingram. If you want to make an EPUB3 solution, it's a lot to ask to roll your own from, from scratch. Um, so increasingly, there's demand that, that, that something fill that void. And in fact, Redium is already starting to do it. And we announced this morning that Benetech, a major provider of technology for the accessibility communities, has integrated a cloud-based version of Redium into their Bookshare service, now in a private beta, but expected to launch publicly in Q1. And I'm going to extremely briefly, just quickly show you that. Here's the Bookshare service with some real content. Uh, 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 a high school text about engineering uh, in, in, in a version of Redium integrated into their own, into their own system. Because Redium is BSD licensed, it can be used even in fully proprietary solutions if you want. And it has all the reflow capabilities, et cetera, of Redium. OK. So that was learning number one. Number two, the architecture of Redium actually has some good benefits. Having the content of Redium, which is EPUB, which is HTML5, and JavaScript, and CSS, implemented in a web-based application that's HTML and JavaScript and CSS, is actually a pretty nice way to do it. Uh, turtles all the way down, as some people uh, might say. Um, it makes things integrated. And we saw that, that appeal of that with Flash Player. One of the reasons that Flash Player became popular for video and took over from things like Real Player and QuickTime is that the player itself could be implemented in Flash. So th there was not a pre-built Chrome that you had to deal with. You could implement your own Flash player for video, combine it with your own content, and have a seamless experience. There's a lot of appeal to doing that with, with, with the web content. And you can see now uh, other open source projects that both work with and are implemented in web standards. Editors like Adobe Brackets and VRMore Scripted, for example. But the third thing we've learned, unfortunately, is that developing for the web platform is still too hard. The open web platform is pretty capable, 
but it's a complicated beast when you consider that there are over four separate major implementations and a myriad of authoring tools. This is the W3C's diagram of what the open web platform is. Not exactly simple. And they proudly proclaim that over 100 different specifications make up the open web platform. Now, I don't think we want to go back to the days of a proprietary Flash player as our only way to deliver content across all the different ways we need to do it, files, applications, websites. But on the other hand, to really make sense out of this open web platform, uh, we need standards and tools. We need guidelines. We need a roadmap. We need tools that work together with a common format. App developer teams per title just doesn't scale. Authors and publishers want tools that enable replicable workflows. As Liza said, nobody's going to learn your markup. And I don't care if that's XML, HTML, XHTML, or a wiki syntax like Markdown. People want to use tools. And I think the second most stupid thing that I sometimes see us in this community doing is getting into debates and arguments about the pros and cons of all these different syntaxes. Whereas what we really need to do is create tools that work together and enable everyone and make sure that that's done in an open platform. So what's next for Redium? Well, for the rest of the year, it's going to be bug fixing and really focusing on getting 100% of EPUB 3 supported. And in fact, yesterday, IDPF announced an EPUB conformance test suite project intended to allow testing of all reading systems, including Redium. Secondly, we're starting to plan a version 2 of Redium that will help meet that need for an SDK. It's not going to be pure JavaScript. There's some things like zip unpacking that you just don't want to do at that layer. And it's going to be optimized for mobile operating systems, tablets, and smartphones. And lastly, we're working together with the W3C and other stakeholders on this vision of the open web platform. Files, applications, and websites with HTML5 technology, we can reach all of these architectures with one standard runtime. The open web platform is the universal runtime. I think the first most stupid thing we're all doing is arguing about whether we should do ebooks, files, apps, or websites. This is books in browsers, but actually I think the name is poor. We really should talk, be talking about books as open web content. Okay, well, maybe books in browsers is a, a snappier title, so maybe we should stick with it. But actually, unless, you're, unless you've got online in your company name, in which case you might have an excuse, I think arguing that you should do one of the others is not what we want to do. So thank you very much, and please, uh, please help us create this open environment. Do I have time for one question? One question. I'll be available all day, and, and, and I'm available at all these places, but we have time for one question. If there isn't. Question in the back. Why is Redium a Chrome extension if it's built on open web standards? So that's its initial packaging for convenience of development and testing. But as I showed you, it's possible to build a web server version. And, and with Redium 2, we're going to be focusing on making sure it works great on, on, on device operating systems and tablets and so on. So that's just sort of, you might say, the, the, the proof of concept version, not, not, the, not the real deal. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.